Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Z here, and in this video today, we're going to be taking apart the KZAS10s. So similar to what I did to the ZS10s, except these ones here are the AS10s. Now this was made possible by Gearbest. They did not sponsor this video. However, they sent me these KZAS10s to disassemble. Anyway, I'll drop a link to their website for this product in the description below so you guys can check those out. So these ones here are the black versions, and I'll be doing to these what I basically did to the KZZS10s. If you guys remember, I took those apart and I tested each and every single driver to make sure each and every driver worked. So there are a few things that I wanted to touch base on before starting. So first of all, I just purchased a Dremel to see if this would make the teardown a lot easier because I tried using a heat gun on these extra KZZS10s that I had, and it just didn't work. The glue on here that's holding these shells together is made out of a resin that's just not letting these things move. So even with all that heat being applied by my heat gun, these things would not pop open. So I ended up using a Dremel. And with the Dremel, I sliced the top off, giving me access to the earphones. Now, I thought initially that once I have access from the top, I'll be able to just pull these out. Little did I know, though, that these things are just glued in there so tightly. So what I did last time with the KZZS 10s, if you guys remember, I broke those apart piece by piece. It looks like I'm going to have to do the same thing with these AS 10s. Anyway, let's get started. I'm going to tear these AS 10s down and then I'm going to be testing out the drivers to make sure each and every balanced armature driver works. And the purpose of this video is basically to make sure that KZ is not fooling anybody with these 5BA driver earphones. So this time I'm not going to be using my ears to test out each and every driver. Instead, I'm going to be using this app called FFT Wave, which basically uses the microphone on your phone to measure the sound that's coming in. So essentially, I'm going to take each and every driver and then individually put them up onto the microphone on my iPhone SE and see if sound is coming out. This way, you guys will be able to see and I'll be able to see as well. And additionally, I will also cover up the other drivers so that the phone will not pick up false positives. So I'll use some putty in order to do that. So first up, we've got a brand spanking new pair of KZAS10s. Again, these are the black versions and Gearbest sent these out to me to disassemble. If you guys remember, I have also the green versions that were sent out to me by a different company. Not to worry though, I won't be disassembling the green ones, I'll be disassembling these ones right here. So the first thing I did here was I dremeled the top off and I had to be very careful here because I didn't want to damage any of the components inside. And as I said before, I tried using a heat gun in order to pop the top shells off, but this did not work at all. So anyway, after about 15 to 20 minutes of grinding, I eventually got the top off. Now, as I remove the top PC board, you can see all that wiring inside. This is where pretty much all the magic happens. And you can actually see the internals there, the 3D printed internals. This is very accurate to what the website depicts as what the internals look like on the KZAS10s. So pretty interesting. Now, when I say 3D printed internals, I am speaking, of course, of the plastics inside. This is one of the things that KZ promotes with these AS10s, so that the internal tubing is pretty much 3D printed. Now moving forward, I didn't want to continue using the rotary grinding tool out of fear of damaging some of the internals. So I ended up using the plier clippers, similar to what I did with the ZS10s if you guys watched that video. I'll actually link a card above so you guys can see that disassemble, disassembly, disassemble? I don't know. So you can, you guys can basically watch that. I basically did the same here. I just slowly and carefully peeled away the black shell. So at every progress point that I made peeling these shells more and more, 
I tried getting those drivers out and they just wouldn't budge. There's so much of this um, gluey residue just trapping those drivers in there. I, I couldn't even move them like a millimeter. These things would not move. So I really had to peel these down almost pretty much almost to the to the bare bottom. So at this point I got the plastic almost all the way to the bottom and I used a dentist pick to try and budge the driver and since I saw that it was moving a little bit I decided I'm going to use my fingers in order to remove this largest base driver. Now as you guys will soon see there's a lot of this gluey residue that I had to deal with. I think at this point a heat gun would have worked but I figured since I made it this far I might as well just continue without the heat gun. Now, if you guys uh, were wondering what the model numbers of each of these drivers were, I wrote them down and I'll have them posted in the description below for reference if you guys wanted to check those out. So one down, four more to go. Now, something interesting that I noticed on this large driver is that there is something inside of that nozzle there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it looks to me like there was some foam in there. Now, this might have to do with the dampening, maybe adding some more bass, maybe getting rid of some of those high frequencies. I've never seen this before, but I figured, let me try to remove this. I had a doubt in me that this might have been some glue, but after removing that substance that was inside, that is foam. That is most definitely foam. Now at this point I was able to remove the 3D printed plastic from the remaining black shell since I peeled most of it away. And just look at all that residue, that glue residue inside of there. I mean is that all really necessary? But anyway I got it out and as you can see here these uh, 3D printed this 3D printed plastic looks exactly the same as what's, uh, what, what the listing depicts the, um, the internals as. And now I just have four more BA drivers to remove from these 3D printed chambers. And as you can see, I am using the dentist pick again. And this is where it comes, it really comes in handy. And I'm just carefully removing that and just check out again all that glue residue. I don't know, maybe it helps with the seal um, I'm not complaining about it, I guess I'm just uh, noticing a lot of it. So there you have it, four more drivers removed from these 3D printed chambers. As you can see, one of them is a mid-size driver, and then you have three small ones. Two of them are what I thought were comboed up, but really they were just glued together very tightly. So I had to spend some time on those uh, two that I have in my left hand. Now this is the part where I test out each and every BA driver to make sure that all of them work. Now the way that I'm doing this again is with my iPhone SE, I am using the microphone on it and I'm using this app called FFT Wave. Basically this app measures the decibels coming in from the microphone. So it may not be 100% accurate, but it definitely gets the job done. And I just want to thank um, V Millhouse for recommending this app to me. He actually recommended it on the teardown, the KCZS 10 teardown video. And so I just want to say thank you to V Millhouse for recommending this app to me. So for the first driver, the A31005, that one is tested and it works. So we're going to mark that and then continue the process. Next up, we have the mid size driver, which is responsible for the mids. And as you can see, it is slightly larger than the smaller ones.
that one works as you can see. So we're gonna mark it and move on to the next one. Now guys, each time I am doing this, I am reapplying the putty so that you don't get sound from the others. So this next one I have here is another A31005 driver, except for this one is a little bit different. This one is a variant of the, the first one. So instead of the 806207813, which is the added number on the bottom, this one is the 806207811. So this one is confirmed working as well, so we're going to mark it with a sharpie like we did with all the others. We're going to reapply the putty and then we're going to move on to the fourth driver, the next fourth driver. Now for the fourth driver we have the A30095. Now this is confusing because apparently there are supposed to be two of these A30095 drivers, but there aren't. There's only one of them. The only drivers that we have two of is the A31005, so maybe this was a mix-up with mine, I'm not really sure, but anyway, there's only one of these A30095 drivers. And as you can see, this driver works as well. So we're going to mark it and then move on to the last driver. And now lastly, this next driver is the big jumbo driver, the one that I removed some of that foam from the nozzle. So this is the base driver, and the model of this driver is the A22955. And as you can tell, that one works as well, so no need to mark it because that's the last of it. So pretty much all of these drivers work, so thumbs up to that. I kind of expected this because when I did this with the ZS10s, I got the same outcome. All the drivers worked perfectly. So rest assured, as you guys saw with your own eyes, all the drivers in the KZAS10s work. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you feel like I missed something or you wanted me to... Um, I guess expand on something that you saw in this video, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, one more thing I did want to mention is as I was uh, removing the putty, I kind of uh, tore one of the um, one of the wire one of the wires from the uh, driver, so I'll have to uh, solder that back on. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace.